Hey, Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, New Pacific 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific 6 Eastern. Believe it or not, I'm not traveling today. I think four straight times I was traveling when massive news broke about Vince McMahon and, and WWE. But today I am here, and there's a lot to talk about. If you have not heard... And uh, that would be very difficult, seeing as that was actually in the top of the hour news on Sports Byline a moment ago. Vince McMahon has, at least this was the claim, voluntarily stepped down as WWE chairman and CEO, while the company's special committee of the board investigates alleged misconduct. Stephanie McMahon named interim CEO and chairwoman until the investigation concluded. So uh, this, of course, was uh, the story that came out a while ago that he had stepped down. Now uh, he's out. What do I mean by out? Well, if you would have gone to uh, WWE.com early this morning and uh, checked out the list of uh, corporate members, everything like that, uh, Vince McMahon was listed. Now no longer listed. He is, at this point, completely out of the company, officially. I suppose he might call Stephanie Triple H and go, Ah, Austin Theory should be cashing in the briefcase. But he's gone. The new head of creative is Triple H. Stephanie McMahon and Nick Khan are the co-CEOs of the company. Vince McMahon, he's, uh, he's effectively done. He's no longer on the board of directors. And there was a WWE 8K filing that came out today that had a lot of information about uh, what's going on. $14.6 million is what they have found at this point. That is the amount of money that has been paid out. It is possible there is more money to be paid out. And obviously we got a lot to talk about. So stick around, everybody. Back in a moment. Wrestling Observer Live. Um, I presume everybody listening to this knows that story of what happened with Vince McMahon. I don't think I need to go back to the very beginning. But we can talk about what happened today. And if we need to go back to the beginning, I guess we can. Triple H now in charge of WWE Creative. The company sent out a press release this morning, formally announcing Nick Khan and Stephanie McMahon, appointed by the board as co-CEOs. Levesque taking over the role previously held by Vince McMahon, who announced his retirement on Friday. My God, the wrestling world. Paul Levesque will assume all responsibilities related to WWE's creative. In addition to his regular duties, the press release states, they announced on Friday he has resumed his role as EVP of Talent Relations. I presume that John Laurinaitis has just quietly ridden off into the sunset. They have not officially announced he's gone, but Triple H got his job. I look forward to returning to my prior position as head of Talent Relations. I'm healthy, fired up, and ready to take charge, Levesque said. In the release. And then there was a WWE 8K that came out today. And due to, quote, certain unrecorded expenses by Vince McMahon dating back to 2006, WWE announced Monday via regulatory statement that they would restate several financial statements. The statements for 2019, 2020, and 2021 and the first quarter of 2022 would be revised. Now, this is the key to the whole thing. The expenses total $14.6 million, which McMahon will pay back. McMahon is currently under investigation by a special committee of WWE's board of directors for alleged hush money payments towards four other female, former female employees totaling $12 million over the past 16 years. The largest of these totaled $7.5 million to a single person. McMahon, who had voluntarily stepped down as chairman and CEO while the investigation was going on, retired on Friday, ceding all responsibilities. By the way, it was uh, noted in the 8K that he uh, he resigned. He did not retire. Vince McMahon said that he had just retired. Ah, I was 77. I've done enough. And et cetera, et cetera. So here's, here's, uh, here's what i got to say about this, and we'll get some thoughts from Mike. i got a few things to say, so buckle up. Should I adjust my uh, my my chair? Yes. Okay. There you go. Well, listen. Here's the thing. So Vince McMahon, obviously, these NDAs they are real. Whatever happened, he paid off at least that we know of 
Four women totaling $12 million, okay? They have claimed, and he has claimed, that he used his own money to uh, pay off these women, these NDAs. His own money. That's what they said. Now they are reporting that their expenses totaling $14.6 million, which Vince McMahon must pay back. Now, when everybody read that this morning, the presumption was, well, he must have used company money to pay off these NDAs. Well, they have, they have reiterated today that Vince used his own money to pay off these women. These were his personal funds. Which then begs the question, well, if these were his personal funds, why does he owe the company? Why is he paying the company back 14? Why would you pay back 14.6 million if you used your own money? This doesn't make any sense. So I have a theory. I have a theory. My theory is that there are two issues here, okay? Let's say... Let's say that I hire Mike Sempervivi, all right? And I've been paying Mike Sempervivi. We'll, we'll just make it, uh, uh, I'll make, I'll, I'll uh, you know, I'll, what, what's the word when you, you know, up or down? I'm getting old. Uh, round it off. I'll round, round it off low, okay? Let's say I'm paying Mike Sempervivi. Round off, thank you. A hundred thousand dollars a year, okay? I hired him. I'm paying him a hundred thousand dollars per year. <clears throat> yes. So then I decide, you know, this Mike Sempervivi is a good looking guy. And so I then proceed to have an affair with Mike Sempervivi, okay? Now, after doing this, I realize, yeah, I don't really want this to get out. I mean So I decide I'm gonna I'm gonna, you know, we're gonna do an NDA. And, Mike, I will pay you $1 million to keep quiet, okay? So out of my own bank account, I pay you $10 million or $1 million to just, you know, get out of here, okay? Go away. Don't ever mention this again. This is our NDA. I'm giving you personally $1 million. So then, you know, it kind of comes out. And then Dave and Tony and everyone realize, bro, you paid this guy $100,000 a year for the last decade, you know, or 12 years or whatever it was. it was good, wasn't it? Let's just, it let's just say. So then maybe the idea is, well, you know what? He employed that guy for 12 years. And during that time that he was having an affair for him or with him, you know, we want that 10, 12 years of payments that he paid Mike back. Maybe that's what's going on here. Maybe this $12 million is, well, the amount of money that we as a company paid these women while Vince McMahon was having a... He can pay the NDAs out of his own pocket, but we want the money back that he, you know, whatever, uh, had them paid by the company for the course of their employment. That might be what it is, because otherwise it doesn't make any sense to say he paid these NDAs out of pocket, but he also owes us the money. For, it doesn't make either Either it was company funds or this is a separate issue that he's paying them back for. So I don't know what's going on. But the, the, the reason I brought all of this up is because of the fact that he must now pay the company back for whatever reason, for whatever reason it is, company funds were used as part of this scandal. Because of that, there's no coming back for Vince McMahon. There's no returning uh, when the heat dies. He's out. He's done. The, the era of Vince McMahon has ended. And uh, and therefore, we can now look to whatever the future brings, which we will get to in a moment. But first off, Mike, any thoughts on on all of this? It shoots off in so many different directions, and there's so many angles that we're going to end up talking about over God knows how long and all the change years as the changes go on. We're not done with this yet because we don't know what the board is going to report and what the whole internal audit is going to give us. One thing that is for sure is there are going to be structural changes inside the company. I cannot believe that there will not be. And how they get done, I don't know. But now we have a situation because of this AK SEC filing where Internal auditing by the accounting department, 
is now, hey, we've got to tighten this up. They're going to have to tighten up everything that happens with the culture of that workplace. The reason that John Laurinaitis, nothing's been announced about him yet, is I am assuming because the board has not gotten their findings yet and are not going to break everything down. There is still more that's going to come from this. Vince McMahon has got 80 percent of the voting power of that company. He can still move things. But will he have to divest some of that, any of that, none of that? We'll have to see what this board report actually comes in states. But a lot of people thought this thing was done and over with and Vince was going to be able to shake it off and be done with it. That obviously proved that that was not the case. And we'll have to see what the real sports report is going to be from HBO. We know the tact that Vince has taken with them in the past. It'll be interesting to see how WWE is treated in this, how they treated real sports back. I mean, that's that's fascinating to me. And a lot of people were saying, well, the, nobody else is reporting on this stuff. Bottom line is Wall Street Journal was just step one. Other people wanted to do their own reporting. We've seen Variety kind of reach out and do little pieces of it. We'll see if this HBO one is the only one that happens. Well, I will I will say that uh, there are rumors that the real sports, HBO real sports story on Vince is uh, uh, one person used the term, I shouldn't even say, let's just say damning, and that there might be another Wall Street Journal article coming out this week. So they may have gotten ahead of things with his resignation on Friday. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Observer.com, this person suggests perhaps he used his own money and then expensed it. Company paid him back. And he got caught. Now he has to pay them back an unrecorded expense or expenses. So, yeah, one way or the other, I mean, this is now that this has come out that he owes the company $14 million for all of this, as noted. I mean, there's no there's no Vince McMahon coming back from this one. So no. what does the future hold? What does the future hold for WWE? Well, you know, at least I'm going to make that $1,000 on that Braun Breaker, Brett. Okay, I'm glad about that one. Because, uh, you know, he's going to get a big push, and he's going to headline a WrestleMania. Probably, uh, perhaps sooner rather than later. But, hey, remember all those times that I said so-and-so was a can't-miss on the main roster? Oh, this person, you can't miss on this. Oh, you can't miss. Guess what? Well, things have changed. Things have changed. Listen, Triple H, he had his highs and lows when he was in charge of NXT. Those takeovers, Awesome. Because what he did was, he would put together what would be an awesome card, and then work backwards. Uh, name the last bad takeover that was put together by Triple H. Is every WWE pay-per-view going to be like a takeover? Well, of course not, because I think even you know everybody realized, well, we, things are different on the main rosters compared to, uh, to NXT. But it's not that different in the sense that this was a guy that was open to using anybody that was able to work and get over. I mean, as I talked about today on the Breaking News Audio with Dave, look at how over Sami Zayn was when he was in NXT. And compare that, I mean, he's his, he does a great job with his current character today, but he isn't in the universe of as over as he was when he was in NXT. You guys all talk about the women and Sasha Banks and Bayley. With the exception of when Becky just exploded on the main roster in 2018, early 2019, which, I mean, that was never the plan. She managed to pull that off for a lot of different reasons. But all of them, they all were at their peak when they were in NXT. Why did Adam Cole leave and go to uh, go to AEW? Well, they wanted him to go up to the main roster and be Budge. And a manager on the main roster. And uh, what did what did Triple H do with, with Adam Cole? What did he do with Johnny Gargano? What did he do with, with all of the top stars that he was given? Who did he push? I mean, the fact of the matter is, I am over the moon excited at the possibilities of a Triple H... Uh, WWE, with Vince McMahon completely out of the picture. You ever watch uh, those video packages? What do you like better, the the video package and such on, on those old NXT shows when Borash was in charge, or the stuff that we see we see nowadays, uh, the production? Some, some will, I'm sure, argue the uh, uh, stuff on the main roster, but not me. 
They had some awesome, awesome video packages. The crew that they had down there in NXT, the idea of seeing some of that old school NXT stuff being brought to the main roster, it's not going to be totally the same, but we're going to see a lot of those things that Triple H did right. Here's the key. We're going to see a lot of those things that Triple H did right, and all those things that Vince did wrong, he's gone. So, yes, I'm excited. He's a pro wrestler. What about you, Mike? There's a big delay there, apparently. He's a pro wrestler. And even if you want to say he's a sports entertainer, fine. <laughs> Bottom line is, is he's worked in the ring. He knows how to bring people up and down. Vince, yeah, he did it to a certain degree, but he was Vince, and he had his certain vision. I think when you put a professional wrestler in there, they're going to look at things differently. And... Some maybe wins and losses are actually going to matter more. Maybe not every physical body type is going to matter as much as how you can make people react. Maybe because the scripts are still going to be there for lots of guys. Maybe guys who don't need those. Maybe we see less of that and more talking points given to people like, oh, I don't know. Who would be a good Triple H one who is going to have a long life there? Kevin Owens. He's going to have a long life anyway, but you know what? Does Kevin Owens does Kevin Owens need anything other than some talking points to go out there and do anything? Of course he doesn't. You know? So hopefully we see a little of that loosened up. Hopefully we see a lot of the terminology that Vince absolutely loved, pronouns, pal, all that sort of stuff. The universe, the belts not being Bro. said. Bro, All let me jump in. Let ahead. me jump in. I already yeah. saw it on SmackDown. Now, mm -hmm. SmackDown was not a night and day show, but absolutely. Michael Cole, listen, I have not been the biggest Michael Cole fan over the years, but he was miles better on SmackDown. He didn't have some dude screaming in his ear the entire time. At one point, he actually said, the WWE Fans. I almost I almost fell out of my chair when he called them fans. He didn't call them the WWE universe. Started now, granted, the show that way. They're still going to they're still going to brand things. And as I mentioned on a show a couple of days ago, listen, if you want to brand WrestleMania as stupendous and you want to have everybody say stupendous on every show, whatever, I don't care. But that was, by the way, a Vince thing. And he even admitted in an interview, I like words like stupendous. But listen, if you want to do that now, that's fine. But Let's loosen up a little bit. Let's say fans. Let's say belts. Let's let uh, New Day, which they did, by the way, come on TV and talk about the Viking Raiders, which, by the way, they didn't change that one. They're now still the new vicious Viking Raiders, which we can drop that one as soon as it's possible if, if, if uh, I mean, if I had my way. But anyway, uh, you know, he's out there going, these guys, have they've, they've been killers everywhere they've gone. Ring of Honor, he says. He starts to talk about the IWGP Tag Team Championships. And then, of course, they moved on from that. But, you know, what I want is a show where everybody is a little more real, a little more organic, a little yes. more loose. And you know what? We saw that to a degree already on SmackDown. Talk to your fans like they're fans, not like they're just little chips to market to and little wallets to try to extract money out of. Talk to them like that every once in a while. Yes, we know that's what you're doing. You're big business. This is America. Capitalism. We know how this works, no matter what anybody says about Stephanie and the, the charity being the marketing thing. We all knew that to be true. She just happened to say it, which made her actually you know, get the slings and arrows. That's how they think. We know what this is. But every once in a while, can you just remember that this thing is pro wrestling? It's still in a ring. If you want to do what Lucha Underground was going to do and have wrestling be the background for your sports entertainment, fine. If that's what you're going to do. But, you know, WWE WWE is still wrestling and there's little adjustments that they can make that are is not going to change their philosophy and how they do things and make them any smaller and can make the product that much better and one of the ways you can do that is some of the verbiage that you present on that show there are many other things that I hope and wish will change as time goes on but that's definitely something that really talk like normal human beings every once in a while you know what I want tonight What's that? I want to see Matt Riddle 
I want to see, see maximum male Austin models. Theory. I want to see... I don't really need to see Austin Theory. But my point is, Two I... Names. I'm ready for names to come back. I'm ready for people to be allowed to have a first and a last name. Listen, if you if you have decided, I don't want anyone going, I don't want Pete Dunn going to AEW as Pete Dunn because he, he, he used the name before WWE. Fine. You want to call him whatever, that's fine. But the Vince's weird quirks that he had where, you know, I I, I don't want this guy to have the first name Austin I want him to be just be Theory. And you know why? It's because I think is is what's Austin Theory's real name? Uh, Vince's know. decree was basically like if if uh if you use the name on the indies, then you can't be that name anymore. Walter, for example. Okay, but also if if part of your name was part of your real name, not even the whole thing. So like John Cena's real name is John Cena, okay? If John Cena had gone to Ohio Valley Wrestling as uh, Johnny Rocketship, okay? When he went to the main roster, Vince, even though Johnny Rocketship is not his real name, with Vince's new decree, he couldn't be Johnny Rocketship because his real first name is John. Therefore, he would have to just be Rocketship. Or he could be Frank Rocketship or whatever. This is stupid, okay? Just give people names... Like, no, why is this guy named Theory, okay? It's not even like... So, I would like to see that. I would like to see a loosening up of promos. I would like to see uh, more than the same eight people on the show every single week. I would like more people to get opportunities. I would like to stop hearing the word opportunity. I would like to be able to hear the word title shot and championship match. You know, and, and they're not going to be, as as I think we talked about in other shows, there's not going to be massive changes right out of the gate. It's not like all of a sudden Nigel McGinnis is going to do commentary. They're going to get rid. They don't want to make massive changes where it feels like the boat is being rocked, okay? But you can make small changes. You can call the guy Matt Riddle again. You can call the guy Austin Theory again. You can, you can slowly bring some of this stuff back. Instead of cutting the camera 100 times during a punch sequence, you can only do 50 times. Let's ease our way into some of these changes and make for a better show. And have better, more cohesive planning because he was Austin Theory on the indie scene long before you signed him. It was a pretty cool name. It fit. He's fine because he's Austin White and because he used the name Austin Theory on the indie. I mean, plan this stuff out better. And I hope that there's better with Triple H overseeing everything. Make sure that NXT, you have something set there so we don't have these changes like Butch and these sudden changes like Raquel Rodriguez when we get up to the main roster. Because it's Hey, so listen, when we come back from this break, I'm going to tell you something that's 100% changed for the better. Back in a moment, Observer Live. You want to know 100%, 100% something today that's changed for the better. What's that? Vince has not shown up and torn up the script. <laughs> and, he, and he never will again. I'll so, do it by phone, pal. Whatever, whatever they have planned this week, they're going to do it. You know, I make fun There's of these There's going to be a Zoom a meeting at the Gorilla. I'll be there. I make fun of these writers a lot, which probably is not fair, but I also read some of the promos they write, and it is fair. <laughs> but, you know, you got a writing team of 40 blokes, which you don't need, but that's that's Stephanie's idea of dating back like 15, 20 years, and so they're going to keep doing it. But, you know, if you have, let's say you have a really great, let's say you actually have a competent, great writing team of, of you know, they all have experience in wrestling and blah, blah, blah. Well, if you put a show together, if you spend a week putting a show together, and some madman comes in and tears it up on Monday, and you got to rewrite the thing in an hour, well, it doesn't matter how good you are. That's probably going to be a, a pretty crappy script, and it's not going to make sense. It's not going to, you know, it's going to be it's going to be raw <laughs> that we've seen over the last couple decades here. Well, if you got a, a competent writing crew, and they have a week to put their show together. And that dude doesn't come in and tear that thing up on Monday? Hmm, I guess we're going to see. I guess we're going to see pretty quickly how much better continuity and such will be when you don't have a guy tearing up the script every Monday and Friday. So, have I mentioned I'm bullish? Now, I will say one thing. I will say one thing. Mike, 
so people know you're still there? Yeah. Talked a little bit today about what does this mean for AEW? What does it mean? Well, we don't know because uh, that would be trying to predict the future. But I can tell you one thing. Uh, what this means for AEW, a lot is going to have to do with their next television deal. If they get a great television deal, then I'm going to be even more bullish than ever. If they get a, a poor television deal, meaning roughly what they're making right now, they're going to be in for some, uh, some rough, rough waves in wow, this listen to sea of change. Here. Man, yeah. well, you... because here's the thing. Here's the thing, Mike. Listen, okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm no. I mean, I'm not busting your. Balls I know that part is obvious, right, but it's like. But I'm going to tell you why that's the case. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Do you remember when Chris Jericho left WWE and he went to AEW? Remember that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Remember, when, like a whole bunch of people left WWE and they went to AEW. Yes. Do you remember when when uh, Cody left AEW and went to WWE? Remember yes. all that? Okay. Yes. Well, all those things happened for the same reason. Even though I hate this word, and, I, and if I were Vince McMahon, I'd banish it from WWE television. It happened because of opportunity. So, there's a lot of people. And I remember when AEW started, I heard from a lot of people that went to AEW. And, you know, they were happy with, with AEW and everything, but they were mostly happy that they weren't in WWE. And I heard from many people, I will never, I will never go back to WWE. I hated that place. And they would go on and on and on. Everything that we talk about on this show and that you hear whenever people leave WWE. Well, Vince is gone. And the number one name that I mentioned so many times is Darby Allen. Because I interviewed Darby Allen on the Jericho Cruise, and he said in the room with me and Dave on the record, never, I will never go to WWE. I will never go to NXT. I will never go. Because he knew that he was going to have much better opportunities in AEW. Well, Vince is now gone. And uh, Triple H has shown that if you have the ability to get over, he will push you all the way. So a lot of those guys, I'm not going to mention any other names, but Darby did say things on record, and I don't know what Darby's thinking right now. Maybe he still thinks I'll never go there. But there are people that last week would still be on the I will never go to WWE train who I don't think are on that train anymore. I think that they will now consider it they may strongly consider it i would not be the least bit surprised if sasha and uh, naomi are already trying to negotiate to go back to wwe i would not be surprised i don't know that so don't report it but a lot changed friday now here's the thing you watch AEW lately you look at the AEW roster dude they got a lot of people on that roster and there are a lot of people that are not being utilized, okay? If some of those people who are, on, are not being utilized great because they have so many people on the roster, if those people are open to going back to WWE, they may be going back to WWE. Now, if it turns out that uh, things are different and better and a lot of people are interested in going there because they can get more money and get an opportunity, well, that would be bad. That would be bad for AEW. But... If AEW is able to get a good television deal, a strong television deal, and they can pay good money for people, then ultimately the same thing is going to happen in WWE, where even if WWE is better post-Vince, which I think it will be, at some point you're going to have too many people and too few spots. And you know what's going to happen? People are going to go, oh my God, I could go over there for a better opportunity and still make a lot of money. So I do believe that if AEW gets a strong television deal, then we're talking two, three, four, five years down the road. I, I, don't, I don't know if I'd go as far as say we could have a boom period, because I don't know if we'll ever have one again like the 90s for a lot of reasons. But things could be so much better for everybody four to five years down the road in terms of making money, having top spots on national television. It could be a bumpy road short-term for AEW, but I do think that long-term this could be better for both companies and all of the wrestlers. 
good competition is good competition. It helps everybody, it especially helps fans because people are on their games more. You know, people are more willing and open to go back and forth between places and, and companies are more apt to take people going back and forth, even if they said they'd never work with them again or even if there's hard feelings or something like that. So, yeah, that is going to be a benefit for everybody, one would hope. It's interesting and it's too bad that guys like Samoa Joe were released and had to go from NXT and from WWE and they were floated out there to other places. It'll be interesting to see if anybody comes back. Your Gabe Sapolsky's, your people like that. I wonder if Alice in Danger, the situation with her would have happened in, under, uh, you know, again, if Vince was gone and things had shaken up. And, and again, those types of people I'd like to see come back. I'd like to see get an opportunity again inside that company. Jeremy Borash being bumped up to the main roster to do some of the things that he's doing in NXT and the crew that he works with, not just him, but everybody involved in that. You know, definitely what is needed is fresh eyes for production on the main roster. Doesn't mean you have to kill Kevin Dunoff, but at some point, if you're going to make wholesale changes, he's probably going to want to step out of the way, so better to get him out. I know everybody is rushing to get Bruce Pritchard out, but what did Bruce Pritchard do when he got fired the first time around? He went to Global because he knew pro wrestling, and he wanted to stay in the pro wrestling business, and he liked it. And his main job is serving Vince in trying to take Vince's thoughts and ideas and have them come out on the screen. And he's been amazing at doing that. He's been an amazing yes man for Vince. Who's to say that he can't be in an amazing yes man for what Triple H's vision is? Because it's not like Bruce Pritchard forgot about all of those years of Houston wrestling. You know what I'm saying? So like if whatever Triple H wants, Bruce Pritchard may actually be a benefit for him. Ed Kosky, the writers, all that sort of stuff, that stuff with Stephanie, we're going to have to see if that changes. There's no reason to believe that it will. My hope is, like I said before, we give talking points more to the people that have earned talking points and we let things flow, as you said, a lot more organically on these shows. It'll make it for a better production because, look, slip ups by announcers, slip ups by guys in the ring, things like that. You don't want botchamania moments, but you do have moments that you can feel real because they actually happen hey guys i got i got talking points for you i got three of them that i've seen what here on got? the chat do number it. one uh this guy goes uh triple h is not the second coming of christ well you're correct he's not the second coming of christ but and this guy goes he's being overhyped okay listen <laughs> i'm not saying the triple h is the greatest of all time a genius i'm not saying any of that and here's the key everybody we don't need a gene. I mean, it would be great if we had a genius, but we don't need a genius. You know what we need? Another hero? Somebody better than Vince. Uh. Bro, if you call... Let's say, let's say that you think that Bruce Pritchard, as a booker, let's say that you think that he sucks, okay? Let's say you think that he sucks, all right? Well, if whoever is brought in to do this job sucks less than Vince then it's a positive. Do you understand? Yeah. So if it does, Triple H doesn't have to be Sam Mushnick or whoever. Ghetto. It is, it is peak. Bill Watts. All he has to do is if the other guy did a poor job, which I would argue, particularly since 2018 that he did, if this guy can do a less poor job, a moderately competent job, then bro... We're, there's a good reason to be bullish here. That's number one. Number two, people talking about, well, you know, it could uh, there, there may be a sale, and we don't know what's going to happen then. You're absolutely right. We don't know what's going to happen. But a sale, a company that buys WWE, let's say they're, they pay uh, $10 billion for WWE, which is probably more than they would pay, but... Probably more than $4 because that's what UFC got. Let's say they pay $6 billion, they buy UFC. NBC Universal. NBC Universal is not paying $6 billion to WWE for them to fail and or go out of business, okay? So, I don't know what's going to happen if a sale occurs, but I do not believe that if a sale occurred to NBC Universal tomorrow, we would see more 
severely massive changes than we're seeing now with Vince McMahon merely being gone. If Vince McMahon, if this did not happen with Vince McMahon, okay, but instead on Friday they sold, and NBC Universal in buying WWE said, we have purchased company, Vince McMahon will still be in charge of creative. I honestly think we would have seen less changes with a sale and Vince McMahon in charge than the number of changes we're going to see now without a sale and with Vince McMahon out. So whatever you see here, now that Vince is gone, I think that it will largely carry on the same once the company is sold, which it almost assuredly will be at some point in the next five, ten years. So we'll we'll see what the future holds. But I, I people that are like, oh, my God, I hope we don't have a sale. But the sale, you should not be worried about a sale of WWE. The biggest bottleneck in future enjoyment and success of WWE is not who owns it. It's who runs it. And Vince is gone. And finally, I do want to mention Samoa Joe because Samoa Joe is like everything you ever needed to know about this Vince-Triple H relationship. Samoa Joe went to NXT, got a huge push. They pushed him like a big star. He was over. People loved him. Got pulled up to the main roster. Vince had no idea to do this guy. Not, no clue. Floundered and eventually was fired. Hunter then rehired him in a different role in NXT and managed to get him wrestling again. And then, of course, Hunter was relieved of his duties and Triple H was fired again. Those are the differences between Vince and Triple H in the story of one guy. Back in a moment, Observer Life. Um, who's excited for Raw tonight, huh? Nobody? I am. Okay. I am actually I'm interested. kind of excited. Well, I'm interested to see what's going to happen tonight. It's the, it's the garden. It is the garden. You should be excited yeah. about that. Well, I don't really care the, about the garden. It's the Mecca. I we care about if the care. show's any good or not. Jesus. I don't care where the show takes place. I'm not one of those oh. blokes. Come on. Hey, but we have uh, we have no time to talk about this, really, because we spent so much time talking about uh, the Vince story, which, in fact, is the biggest story in all of wrestling. But we do have uh, Dynamite Wednesday with the return of Daniel Bryan. He's been cleared, Bryan Danielson. So he will be in the ring on the show Wednesday versus Daniel Garcia. We have Swerve Strickland versus Tony Nese and Smart Mark Sterling. Ricky Starks against Dan Housen for the FTW title. Thunder Rosa versus Miu Yamashita. Yam- Yamashita. How many times can I mess that one up? And John Moxley defends the interim AW title against Roosh. So that is the... this in uh, real quick too, because I talked about you know not you know giving talking points to pros. One thing with the writers too, they have a lot of pros there, like Billy Kidman, Jamie Noble, you know Steve Carino, guys who have been there for a long time. Let's also maybe put like the experience of Adam Pierce and Chris Park and some of those guys, let's put it back in their hands a little bit too. Again, people are still going to need to be written for. They're still going to rush up people in this day and age, but give some of this power back to the workers. That's what I really hope Triple H can do. We'll be back tomorrow, everybody. Hey, if you want more on all of these stories, you should be subscribing to WrestlingObserver.com. We've done tons of shows talking about all of this this coming weekend and uh, more to come. Filthy Tom tonight, 5 Pacific, 8 Eastern, head-to-head with Raw. Tonight. Unfortunate timing. We'll uh, we'll do that. Back here tomorrow with more. Hall, he wins. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.